All right, welcome everybody to the Areet Music channel. I have a very special guest for you guys today. On this channel, by the way, guys, if you're watching from YouTube, I'm also gonna be posting this on Facebook as well. So on this channel, I share absolutely everything that I can with my journey as an artist in terms of marketing, getting more people to hear my music. And I have stumbled upon a really amazing, um, amazing music promotion expert. She's helped me a lot in terms of setting up ads and that kind of thing. So in this video, we're gonna talk more about running ads and using that for your music promotion in order to grow more on Spotify and in general to build your audience around your music. So super excited to have her. Her name is Kareen Porman. Welcome, Kareen. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. I'm so excited to be here. Absolutely, I'm so excited too. We're gonna cover uh, a lots of different types of music marketing strategies, guys. We're gonna dive into some frequently asked questions on marketing your music, when to market, how to make the most of an ad budget, all these kinds of things, so stick around. Um, and uh, I wanna you know, introduce Corinne. She's the Director of Demand Generation at Tone Den. Uh, which is an all-encompassing social marketing platform for musicians, gamers, streamers, event promoters. And she runs all of Tone Den's strategic growth and inbound marketing initiatives alongside a team of incredibly talented music and event marketers. So, um, and more recently too, Corinne, you've been uh, providing one-on-one -on -one support to customers looking to grow their fans and followers on Spotify with the Spotify growth playbook, which we'll, we'll talk more about a little bit later. But um, yeah, pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again for having me. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to be here. Cool, awesome. So let's dive into this. So um, let's start with this. Given the way that everything has unfolded in this year, it's 2020, I'm sure you guys know what we're talking about. With everything that's going on right now, what do you think artists should be focusing on most in terms of getting more people to hear their music? That's a really good question. I mean, given the lack of touring that is happening in the music industry right now, um, you know, events have really been put on pause. And one thing that we're recommending to artists that's really important during this, like, uh, and I apologize for my seven month old puppy that is barking in the background. I was hoping oh, okay. I'm doing the hot stream, but um, it's really important for artists to get their fans in front of the, the right audience at the right time. Um, we have introduced a lot of these growth marketing playbooks that are really important uh, for artists that you know are looking to do some like off cycle marketing that may not have like any upcoming releases, but still want to increase their streams and their fans. Um, but yeah, I think growing your audience during this time is going to be really valuable, especially once touring kicks back in, um, you'll be speaking to a wider audience. Mm -hmm. So focusing more on audience growth and just building a loyal following around your music. So how, where, like, how does one do that? That's a good question. I think to uh, find and really like speak to a more qualified audience, like you said, uh, building a uh, you know, a really successful advertising campaign that drives to users uh, to listen to your music. Um, driving to Spotify specifically is something that we've been exploring a lot at Tone Den. Um, growing on Spotify, uh, being able to um, get your music in front of those fans and then get those fans to stick. And so, so how does that work? Can you walk us through the process? Like, what does that look like when someone um, when someone sees, sees an ad, and then how do you get that person to turn into an actual loyal follower of your music? That's a good question. Uh, right now, so many people are utilizing their social media platforms pretty actively. Um, so, you know, there's four different ways that you can really grow on Spotify. Um, one is like editorial placement, which can be like super competitive. You know, there's 40,000 new songs that are released on Spotify on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so like trying to submit can be a little bit of a black hole or feel like one. Mm -hmm. um, and even with editorial placement, you can really increase streams, but not necessarily get the fan that sticks. Um, there's also the approach for like independent playlists. It's the same thing yeah. if, really get the fan. if you're uh, paying for, uh, if you're paying for placement or receiving like a free placement, um, that can increase your streams, but not necessarily increase your your follower count. Um, 
or like if your song goes viral on like TikTok, like people are definitely going to be able to find and listen to your music. Um, but the one thing that really, really works for artists that's a little bit more sustainable um, and a little less competitive is algorithmic placement. Um, so by running advertising campaigns that drive to your Spotify profile, um, you're really increasing the probability of some of those uh, algorithmic placements like Discover Weekly or Release Radar. Um, it's really important to be able to uh, get, you know, that uh, fan and stream. Uh, Spotify is looking at both when it's thinking about uh, the probability of placement on those dis uh, Discover Weeklies and Release, release Radars. Yeah, because I know a lot of artists right now are, you know, we're all looking at how do we get on playlists. And it's important to note, I think, that playlists aren't all made the same on Spotify. And it's important to note that there are different kinds of playlists. So you're specifically talking, so editorial playlists are the ones that are curated. Is that right? By Correct. Yeah. Primarily by like Spotify employees. Um, so editorial placement, you know, you can submit for that. Um, but it, it's also you know, you're, you're competing against so many other artists that are also submitting to those editorial playlists, um, which is where I think people start looking at the independent playlists, which uh, are again, like still it's competitive, but um, it's a little bit more challenging uh, to know how reputable they are, um, to do your research, um, submissions may be a little bit easier, or if it's free, you know, you're going to get, uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money to get playlisted, but mm -hmm. it's, um, it's not as predictable, I guess, in that you're not guaranteeing, and no, no one's really guaranteeing a fan and a stream, but you're more likely to garner a fan and a stream if you're driving direct to the artist profile and like getting your music in front of a more qualified audience. So like being able to target someone that you know could potentially be a fan of your artistry. Right. So. So there's less resistance in getting on, let's say, an algorithmic playlist than the the curated ones or independent or I, maybe not just less resistance, but slightly easier effort. Is that is that right? Totally. Yeah. If you can increase your uh, streams and increase your fans, um, Spotify is looking at that data. So uh, if you're able to um, increase that like save to listener ratio, like Spotify is gonna pick that up and uh, increase your probability of placement on that. It's not necessarily as competitive. It's not curated by an individual. It's curated by, you know, real listener data. So if, you know, your track is getting, um, you're increasing that save to listener ratio by getting more streams and followers to your Spotify profile, it's it's going to increase that that placement on those algorithmic playlists for sure. Yeah, it's kind of like the chicken and egg, like you want more streams and followers, but then, you know, you don't have that yet, but then that's what Spotify needs in order to like boost you up, I guess, more. So ads, running ads kind of is the the beginning, the starting point of that cycle, let's just say. So um, so when you're running an ad, you're sending more activity to, to your Spotify or wherever it may be, it doesn't have to be Spotify, but you're sending more activity there and that's kind of boosting you up. Um, so can you explain a little bit more about what does that process look like in terms of setting up an effective ad? How does that all work? So it depends on what the artist's goal is, right? If the artist's goal is to grow their, you know, fans and streams, uh, to increase, you know, getting playlisted, uh, we definitely recommend uh, at Tone Den a specific uh, strategy for that um, by growing, growing your fan base on Spotify. But setting up a traditional ad campaign can start with, you know, whatever the artist's goal is. Is it to you know, get people to uh, RSVP to a live stream, uh, there's a strategy for that. Is it to get someone to purchase merch that you just dropped? There's a strategy for that. Um, it really depends on what your end goal is uh, to like where you would like to start an advertising campaign. Um, but essentially it's driving traffic to, you know, wherever you wanna see that conversion um, is really, really important. So what if you, so let's, Let's stick with the Spotify then. It, what if you do, your goal is to gain more followers on Spotify. Um, what does an ad campaign like that look like? 
In some of our research and like beta testing of this recent playbook, um, it's really placement on Instagram stories has been the most valuable for artists. So if you're running an ad uh, that you know has a swipe up action, it's gonna drive directly into your Spotify uh, profile, um, which will increase the likelihood of a fan that enjoyed your music enough to swipe up on it um, to follow and stream your music versus driving direct to a playlist or driving direct to a track. Um, where you would just potentially get the stream, but not the follow and the stream. Um, so I would say like placement is really, really important. Um, and then targeting is really important too. So if you are looking to release your music or get your music in front of a more qualified audience, um, it's important to look at like that fans also like data. So uh, with Tongden, we have uh, an automated generated interest tool. So we're tapping into uh, that fans also like data where uh, we're only gonna populate Facebook uh, fan data of artists that kind of match your sound. Um, so getting your music in front of a fan base that's pretty genre specific is gonna be helpful in um, getting that ad in front of a user that's more likely to swipe up. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know I've I've run Instagram story ads, I've done YouTube ads. Um, it's always like when you're setting up an ad, it's always that that gray area of like, oh, how do we optimize the interests? How do we, um, you know, what interest should I put in here so that this ad will speak to that audience and therefore get more conversions? So how do you how do you manage, you know, figuring out what what interest you should tweak here and there? How do you figure that out? I think starting broad with an advertising campaign, especially with this playbook, is going to be really, really useful. Um, and then, you know, scaling back as you see fit. Uh, obviously, you'd want to stick with your genre. But what's great about this, like the Spotify growth playbook in particular, is that we're generating that interest for you. So based on fan data, um, we're going to populate artists that are in one specific genre. So. Um, if you're, you know, looking to target, uh, you, if you're looking to target a specific uh, fan base in a genre, you don't necessarily have to do a ton of research on like which artist should I pull in for this. Like, we're going to populate that data for you based on like uh, the the popularity of certain artists in that in that genre. Um, but yeah, starting broad, I think, is going to be really valuable. And then, you know, if you're not seeing a campaign perform the way that you'd ideally like it too, you can scale back and, you know, consolidate your, your audience a little bit more. What does that mean exactly? Consolidate your audience? I think just uh, creating a smaller audience. So like streamlining it. So it's a little less broad, uh, deleting some of that artist data or that interest based data um, is going to help, uh, you know, talk to a, you know, a smaller audience in this particular playbook. I think that's amazing that you guys have a tool where you can where you will populate the interests for the artist. I think that's so powerful um, because there's so many things to choose from, right? Uh, so that's really that's a that's a good starting place, especially if you're just starting out for you know running ads using this playbook. Um, it's super helpful when you so is there like is there a certain a uh, good time to run ads in in your career um and how what is like the duration of ads that or the the duration of time that you should be running your ads for in order to see some results great question uh it really is dependent on like the the strategy or the overarching like goal of the campaign so if it's growth that that's a long game you can run a growth campaign pretty endlessly um with that like virtuous cycle of Spotify followers, you know, the more fans and streams that you get, the more likely to get playlisted you are, the more likely that you'll get more fans and streams just by getting playlisted. And it's kind of like this endless cycle. So if you're looking to have consistent growth, you know, month over month, you could really run a growth campaign for as long as, as, as you'd like uh, to increase, you know, fans and followers. Um, but if it's, you know, to, you know, sell tickets to an event that could change the strategy. You might want to start, um, you know, a few weeks out uh, if it's uh, driving people to a streaming lander to like pre-save your your track. There's a different uh, time optimization that I would recommend there. So like that would be like two weeks. Um, but it really is dependent on on what the strategy 
is or what the end goal for the artist is on how long you uh, should, or like how, how long you should run an ad or how far in advance you should start advertising before like a music release or um, ticket sales. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I see a couple questions coming here. So let's just actually take those here. Okay. Um, so we have one from Esatino Artists. They're asking what platforms can Tone Den run ads to? Great question. Um, right now you have traditional placements like Facebook uh, and Instagram, um, but we also have Google ads uh, that is in our beta testing right now. So if you uh, are interested in running placements on Google, you can do that as well. Um, but for um, traditional digital conversion campaigns, uh, Facebook and Instagram is you know, my, gonna be my first recommendation. Mm, okay, awesome. And um, another question here, with there being so many artists and competition, do you think ads is the way to grow a fan base? I think ads can help bolster growing your fans. And I think that that's a really, really great, great question. As long as you're getting your fan or getting your um, ads in front of the right fans. So like really uh, honing in on what that targeting is, um, whether it be like genre specific targeting with like Spotify um, or if you're looking to, you know, generate more of like a, a remarketing campaign to artists that have visited a certain uh, fan link that you've created or have RSVP to a certain stream that you've hosted. Um, I think that there uh, is a way to, you know, hone in on the correct audience and that is going to help you build a more loyal fan base. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's the gold mine right there is not just posting your music out there and you know just getting views. It's not necessarily about the views or the followers or the views rather. Um, it's it's about really building a loyal fan base, about connecting, finding that person that's going to really connect with your music, and then bringing them into your world and continuing to tell them more about what you do. You know, this event that you're having here, this album later on, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, that's really cool that you're able to retarget that audience that you have curated from these ads. Oh. Um, so that's really cool. Um, Rani is also asking a question here. Do you really retain the viewers gained through ads or how can you retain the viewers after campaign is over? I think it's uh, content creation. So if you're you know, consistently running a growth campaign um, and you want to focus on retention, it's going to be, you know, getting, if you're releasing new music or getting your content in front of those users that have more, more recently engaged with you, you know, uh, as an artist, like, especially with like something that's off cycle, it's, you know, getting, getting something that you may have had in your arsenal of like music in back in front of a, a fan that may not have necessarily heard it before is also going to be helpful too. Um, but I think just populating content for, for the end user is going to help you retain those, those fans. Um, but definitely if, the, if you're getting a, a stream and a follow for like these growth campaigns that we're talking about, um, they're going to be there to listen. Like you'll, you'll never be talking to like an empty room per se um, mm -hmm. if you are building your fan base uh, consistently. So you don't need to necessarily just be running ads when you're releasing new music or have an event coming up. You can, um, the you can just you know be present in those people's worlds um, just by you know continuing to show them what you do have still in your arsenal, like what what have you created in the past, and that's totally fine. Um, so these are good questions, guys. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so okay, so we talked about you know, uh, duration of time running an ad, we talked about purpose, all that kind of stuff. Um, what metrics should you be paying attention to when you're running an ad? That's a, a great question. Um, I'll focus on Spotify growth specifically. Um, so there's a couple of different metrics that we showcase on like the performance of that playbook campaign. Um, and that's growth uh, day over day. So like the increase in fans on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, how much spend that you've put towards a campaign and a new metric that uh, really hasn't been measured previously, um, which is the cost per follower. So we have built out a tool that allows you to actually see um, what at a dollar amount your your fans are costing you. So if you're running ads on a day-to-day -day basis, um, 
you can see, you know, what is that increase in follower count? Uh, what, what percent increase are you seeing on a day-to-day -day basis? And then what dollar amount uh, have you allocated to gaining those new fans? Um, that's a, a really cool metric to look at, but then you can also look at, you know, traditional advertising metrics like click-through rate. Um, that's going to tell you exactly how, uh, how many people have interacted with that uh, particular ad campaign. Um, but yeah, overall, overall performance metrics, being able to like really uh, say, what are, what is my like return on this investment? Uh, I've spent this much money. I've made this much money in merch sales. I've uh, spent this much X amount of dollars on this growth campaign and I've gained this many followers. Um, being able to like look at your music uh, from a marketing point of view is gonna be really important. Um, and what does that ad spend look like in order to see some results? You know, do you need to have a big budget? What, what does that entail? I don't think that you have to have a big budget to start. Um, it really does depend on like, you know, your follower count to start, you know, how many people are you actually speaking to? How large is the audience that you've targeted? Um, how far do you want your dollars to go? Um, for the, you know, growth campaigns, you, we've seen campaign performance, uh, really positive campaign performance with people spending as low as $5 a day. Um, but I think that you can increase that uh, based on, you know, uh, how many people you're, you're reaching. Um, if you wanted to, we recommend to start like on the growth campaign, like a five to $10 a day budget. Um, but if you wanted to go upwards from there, because you're seeing your campaign, like really snowball, you're gaining a, a ton of new followers. You want to get in front of more people. Um, then you could increase your budget to like as really as much as you want, but you don't need a, a heavy budget to start marketing your music. Um, really like $5 a day is a, a really healthy place to start for sure. And how, how are you optimizing that investment? So you said a good metric to look at is cost per new follower. So how, how are you bringing that, how do you bring that cost down? I think bringing that cost down, you can continue to optimize growth campaigns, uh, you know, three different ways. One would be um, targeting overall. So just like streamlining your audience if it's too broad or if you're not talking to a broad enough audience, you can increase the amount of people that you're, you're reaching. Um, or, you know, optimizing creative is another great way that we recommend um, making campaign uh, adjustments. Um, and then overall, and then budget, like if you wanted to um, get in front of more people, um, you could increase the budget. But uh, to my biggest recommendation is going to be creative optimization. Um, there are definitely things that you can do um, as far as creative goes to um get, you know, new creative in front of uh, a pre-existing audience or, you know, update the creative, test new pieces of creative, test new songs. Um, there, there are definitely ways to optimize a campaign without having to increase budget. Um, and I'd recommend doing that before spending any more money um, because there may be something that works a little bit more positively without having to like put more dollars into a campaign. And guys, for those of you who don't know the creative that she's talking about, the creative is actually the ad that people see. So the video or the image or whatever you're using in order to run the ad. Um, that's what you mean by creative optimization. So what um, what makes a good creative? Like what does what what is that constructed of? Uh, video. I, I will first and foremost say video creative is going to perform at least 80% better than uh, static image creative. So when you're running your campaigns uh, specifically on Instagram story ads, um, people are expecting to see video content. Um, what's also helpful is context. So if you're able to provide the end user with enough context on what they're going to get when they swipe up, um, that's probably going to yield you a higher conversion. So let's say you're driving to your Spotify profile, I'd highly recommend putting, you know, the name of the track that you're prompting the end user to listen to, um, mm -hmm. the uh, swipe up action so that there's a little bit more context on what you expect the end user to do. Um, but yeah, context is gonna be everything. And then high performing video creative usually includes people. So if you're, you know, a, an artist or a performer, if you're able to include, um, you know, maybe a live performance of yourself or um, a music video content. Uh, you don't need it to be like super, uh, like high quality. It could just be like you 
hanging out playing a song or a track in, in your bedroom you know it, it's it's just going to be the 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 live performance that i think really really helps um as an artist for sure um, yeah. but yeah i think video creative is going to be my number one recommendation there awesome and yeah it's um i like that you said to include the name of the song um because yeah, you, you don't, that's true. like if someone's swiping up, they might come to a whole list of, of music, right? On your Spotify really? or artist profile. So um, yeah, it's good to definitely give them that call to action specifically so they know that they, so that they get what they're looking for. Um, and how many ads should you be testing at once or creatives should you be I, testing at once? Good, I think that's a good question. Uh, I would highly recommend always running like an A-B test um, so like two pieces of creative, you could even run uh, a creative test with, um, you know, two different tracks since you're driving with this particular ad, like I'm, I'm primarily talking about like a growth campaign. Um, but if you're driving to your Spotify profile and you're, um, you want to test, you know, what's resonating with the audience that you've targeted, you could um, run an ad creative for one track that may be off cycle and then maybe one track that's like a newer release and just see what resonates with the audience. Um, what's great about Tonden is we have, you know, automatic opti like budget optimization and then creative optimization. So let's say you run two pieces of creative, uh, one outperforms the other. We're only going to serve that uh, higher performing ad to any new uh, people that your ads getting served to. Um, so you don't have to go in and make any adjustments to your campaign whatsoever. Um, we'll automatically funnel your budget and the creative to the right people at the right time. I love that this is all automated. I think that's the biggest advantage of, of doing, you know, ad paid advertising in terms of music promotion is that it's running for you. It's like you have a marketing team working for you, but then at a fraction of the cost that it would take to hire somebody. Um, and, you know, you could just let it run. And how often should you be checking it and, and making certain tweaks to optimize your ad campaign? Uh, I think that you can monitor it like pretty actively. You know, we have seen results within the first like 48 to 72 hours for some of these growth campaigns. Um, so if you're not seeing the results that you want to see within that like short couple day window, um, I would say that you could make some optimizations then. Um, but you should be able to immediately see results. Uh, but as far as like monitoring goes, it, it's really healthy to just like make sure that your ads are performing the way that you expect. So at least 24 to 48 hours, just like check on how your ads are performing, make any amends that you, you see fit. Um, but what's great too about some of these campaigns is you can, uh, we send out like daily, weekly and monthly reporting. So let's say you have an ongoing campaign that exceeds a, a month's time. Um, you'll, you'll get that re reporting on a weekly basis. So if you don't have the time to like constantly monitor it, um, you'll get those updates. Uh, so you can make amends on a, a you know, day to day, week to week, month to month basis. And what kind of results have you seen some artists get, like some of the artists that you've worked with in terms of a growth campaign? What does that, what do those results look like? It, we're seeing really, really positive results. So the way that I've been analyzing this metric is, you know, it, if you've never run marketing to your growth campaign and you are getting you know, one to two followers on a day-to-day -day basis um, on your Spotify profile, and then you start to see like, you know, 10 to 15 to 20, upwards of like 100 a day. Um, it, it definitely is dependent. But um, as far as like overall growth, I would say at least like 90 to 100 percent of the people that are running growth campaigns on Tone Den are seeing an increase in day to day follower count, um, mm -hmm. which is which is awesome. That is awesome. It's not, you know, it's um it's not, you're definitely not throwing money away in that sense, you know, if you're running an ad, because I think, I think that's what a lot of artists are weary about. If you're, you know, new to getting into running paid ads is, am I throwing this or will I see results from this that I want? And will I be throwing this money away? So for that kind of percentage, um, that's amazing. And I, I remember I was reading your, the Spotify growth playbook uh, or the Spotify growth guide that you guys wrote up on your site. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, 
one of your artists, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it was like from 800 to thousands of followers in 90 days or something like that? Yeah, one of our beta testers, uh, she was able to, you know, increase her follower count pretty excessively um, within like the first 90 days. I believe that her metrics were like, you know, a little over 800 uh, to upwards of like 10 or 11,000, um, which was really, really incredible. Um, and, and the way that she approached that that particular campaign was, you know, she started small. She started with like a five to ten dollar a day budget, but it really was important for uh, her to hone in on that targeting. So being able to tap into a network of like pre-qualified uh, fans based on that, like fans also like data, um, you you're she was able to get her music in front of the, the right people in order to, you know, grow her following um, in a very, very short amount of time. It, so was she retargeting to begin with or she just kind of stumbled, she just kind of knew her sound and that's what really helped her? Like, what do you think led to that kind of growth? Um, for uh, this particular artist, which we review in that like promotion guide, which um, mm -hmm. we'll, I think we're linking out in the descript video description, mm -hmm. um, but prior to running this growth campaign, she wasn't doing any, any marketing whatsoever. Um, so being able to see the lift was pretty, uh, pretty severe. So she wasn't, um, you know, running, running any ads whatsoever, but as soon as she introduced advertising and she started targeting people that were fans of artists that are in the same genre as her, she was able to see, see that significant lift within that, that first 90 day window. Very cool. Amazing. Uh, we have another question from Ronnie. So uh, Ronnie's asking, what is the average budget for a music video campaign when working with Tone Den? I think that, you know, the budget is really going to be dependent. But like I said, you really don't need a, a heavy budget to start um, depending on where you're driving. Um, like I said, we've seen customers have success, which like by running a budget with like, you know, five to ten dollars a day for the duration of the campaign. Um, so, so I think that, you know, starting small and then scaling up is going to be my recommendation there. And so I think this is a good segue into talking more about Tone Den. Can you explain more about what it is? What, what, um, what tools are available for artists to get their music heard? Sure. Um, so Tone Den, like you said, when we first started, it's like an all encompassing, uh, social marketing platform. Um, we have, you know, all of your traditional digital digital advertising tools. Um, but there's also really great uh, playbooks in addition to this uh, Spotify growth playbook. Um, our growth suite that we just launched is, uh, we have Instagram growth campaigns, YouTube growth campaigns, um, and then again, just like the Spotify growth campaign. Um, so if you're looking to get your music and grow your social channels during some of this like, you know, uh, off cycle time if you don't have any new releases or you want to drive traffic to you know pre-existing content uh, you're able to do that um, we also uh, have you know fan links um, which allows you to track um, any traffic that you're driving to uh, whatever whatever uh, smart link that you've uh, created um, we also just launched a live streaming piece of the platform. So, you know, that's a really great tool to get your music in front of people um, if you're not, you know, on tour at the moment or playing live shows um, at, a, you know, a venue. Um, we, uh, yeah, there's like, there's a ton, the Spotify growth playbook, which I know I've talked about so much, but it's just a tiny, tiny piece of the overall Tone Den platform. Um, but tons of artist tools uh, to get your music in front of the uh, the right fans at the right time. I love that you guys are very, um, like you create these tools and products very much specifically to a goal. Like it's very purpose driven. It's like, if you have an event, here are all the tools that are available to you. If you are you have a new release coming out, here is what you can do, you know, to get, you know, get more eyes on that. Um, so I love how that's all like, it's all organized in that way when you're you're going into Tone Den. Um, do you wanna talk a little bit more about the, the Spotify growth uh, playbook or the guide as well? 
Sure. Yeah. Um, a lot of the things that we've covered here, you know, the, um, you know, how to get playlisted on some of those algorithmic playlists, um, that save to listener ratio, that's really important that um, Spotify is looking at. Um, and also one thing that we haven't really discussed is a number that Spotify looks at that increases your probability of placement on algorithmic playlists is um, the popularity index. Um, popularity index is a zero to 100 ranking on like how popular, how popular an artist is compared to other artists on the uh, Spotify platform. Um, that save to listener ratio is uh, what informs some of that popularity index number increase. Um, but if you can increase your uh, fans, if you can increase your streams, um, you're inherently going to increase that popularity index number. Um, and the probability of placement on like Discover Weekly and Release Radar is going to increase, um, which is is really really great. Um, I think but, that's, yeah, I I, I often encourage um, I, I try to find different ways to encourage people to actually hit the save on music because I yeah that's that's an important piece, but not a lot of people know that that's actually that's um that's a big indicator to the Spotify algorithms um, in terms of boosting your music. Uh, Ronnie is asking, what is the best way to promote your audio song online? Uh, not a music video, but just audio. I think the growth playbook is a great place to start. Um, we also have uh, another uh, piece of the platform that allows you to drive traffic to a streaming lander. Um, so some of those fan links that I was mentioning previously, if you wanted to, you know, house your music on a streaming lander, um, we have a, a piece of the platform that allows you to do that. So in addition to, you know, some of the growth campaign that we've been discussing, like creating ads that drive to your Spotify profile, you could also create ads that drive to a streaming lander um, that allows, you know, fans to stream on whatever platform they are more likely to stream on. So whether that be, you know, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, et cetera. Um, Additionally, if you have an upcoming track and you just wanted to get more people to pre-save your campaign, there's a tool for that too. Um, it just uh, is, it's almost the same as a streaming lander, except um, it allows fans to pre-save um, your music. And then once it, your song becomes available, it'll automatically turn into a streaming lander so that you can get fans to pre-save, collect data and information that you can utilize later to retarget um, and then allows fans to stream once that track becomes available. So a streaming lander is something that gives, um, when someone lands on it, they it gives them different options on where they can listen to your music, is that right? Correct, yep. So okay. it basically lists out every, uh, every place that your uh, track is available to be streamed on. So like, and that's by choice too. So like if you only wanted people to stream on YouTube, you could create a streaming lander that um, lists out YouTube, but um, I definitely recommend like wherever your track is available. If you want someone to stream it, you can list it out on this, this lander. So Ronnie, I think it depends. So it's, it, the question would be, where is your music sitting on right now? Um, is it YouTube? Is it Spotify? Um, and from there you can figure out, you know, whether you want to give, you want to send traffic to this streaming lander that Corinne's talking about and then give them the option to listen to wherever they want. Or if you just have that on one place, like if you just have the song on YouTube, for example, then you can do an ad campaign. Is that right, Corinne? And just sure. right there. Yep. Yeah. You can. Uh, so with like some of the growth suite uh, content that I was discussing, like if you want to drive people to your YouTube channel and gain more subscribers and streams on a particular video, you can do that. Um, but really it is dependent on like what your goals of an artist are. Like if you wanted to increase um, vid views on a, a music video that you just dropped, I would recommend running an ad campaign that drives directly to that music video. Um, but again, if you're just interested in increasing streams on a particular track, uh, you know, there's other ways that you can do that, whether it be a streaming lander or um, with like a growth playbook that drives directly to Spotify. And um, there is a tutorial on this channel, Ronnie, about how um, 
how to create a fan link which is uh is that is the streaming lander right like when something pops up like that and gives them different options so um with that fan link it's basically a link that gives your whoever lands on it different options on where they can listen to your music um so i show how to create that in tone den um you can you can look for it on this channel here um but yeah great questions Rani. Uh, yeah, and thank you so much for having such incredible content. I like, I love your channel so much, and we really, really appreciate all of the um, all of the work that you're doing to provide educational content to musicians. Um, that's one thing that Tomden strives to do. We want the experience of advertising to be, you know, very streamlined, and for you know the artist or musician, it it should be you know, easy enough so that the primary focus is on creating music and creating content and doing what you really love and um, still being able to get your music in front of the right people, but, you know, not have to have, um, you know, spend an endless amount of time learning marketing or advertising. Like we want to provide the, the most seamless um, user-friendly experience for, for artists. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I just feel like whatever I'm learning, I want to share with other people, be, other music artists, because it's it can be a very like solo, you know, try to figure everything out on your own. Um, when you are doing that, you're not part of a label or anything. So, um, you know, it definitely helps to hear it from, from someone who's gone through that. Um, Akram is asking, what is the, uh, I think it's this one here, what's the best YouTube ad strategy to get fans to subscribe to your channel and what does that creative look like? Um, I think the, the YouTube strategy, uh, as I mentioned, and now I apologize, there is someone mowing my lawn. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. if, if you wanted to try driving to you know your YouTube channel, the YouTube growth playbook would be a great place to start. Um, again, like video creative is going to perform uh, static image creative, um, outperform static image creative in almost any type of ad campaign that, that you'd be running. Um, I would recommend, you know, some of the best performing YouTube content that you have, you know, what are you marketing? What are you looking to market? Um, what type of educational content or, you know, music content are you providing on your channel? Um, I would include that in, in whatever ad creative that you build out. And those um, those videos that you use for your YouTube ads, it can be it's it's longer obviously than fifteen seconds. Do you know how long? Um, well, it depends on like the the placement. So I would always recommend that people take action on advertising. And I, I want to clarify too, we don't do placements on YouTube. It's just mm -hmm. Facebook and Instagram um, or Google if you wanted to. Um, but the uh, recommendation, people take action within the first three to five seconds of any you know, ad campaign. So whatever your call to action is, I would recommend making that like first and foremost in whatever ad creative that you have built out. Right, okay, awesome. Um, cool, uh, Corinne, is there any sort of last moments of wisdom that you'd love to share with us? You have so much in that mind of yours. I just want to tap into it. I, I really appreciate that. Um, and again, thank you so much for hosting me. And uh, my the only thing that I, I'd like to leave is, you know, check out the some of the educational content that we we have accessible. So that, you know, Spotify promotion guide that we discussed. Uh, and then in addition to that, Ali, one of our uh, co-founders and CRO, he uh, hosts a weekly live stream for Spotify marketing on Wednesdays. Um, so if you are able and curious, I would highly recommend tuning in to, to that too. Awesome. That's really great. And guys, the um, the link to the Spotify growth guide that we were talking about throughout this live stream is in the description, along with the link to, um, to Tone Den as well, if you want to set up your free account. Uh, I'll also put the I'll also put the link to um, to those weekly sessions that you that you're talking that Ali's hosting because I think that's that's really great to just kind of jump onto a weekly session and just kind of increase your knowledge on what it looks like to grow your Spotify following and and also be a part of a community that way too. Yeah. Speaking on the community, Tonden also has uh, something called the Academy. So if you know you're not able to tune into one of the live streams that Ali has to offer. Uh, Tone Down Academy is a really great resource to you know, meet other music marketers, uh, see what their strategies look like, um, ask questions, et cetera. Awesome. Um, we'll take this one last question here and then we'll wrap it up. Akram's asking about email marketing. So what are your thoughts on email marketing for musicians? How do you grow something like that? 
I think if you have a pre-existing email marketing list, that's super valuable. Uh, you can load in any of those uh, emails that you have. Um, as long as someone has opted in to receive content from you, um, it's a great uh, list to be uh, building that you can use to generate you know, a retargeting list or get your content in front of people that are really interested in uh, receiving content from you. Um, as far as building an email list, in some of these fan links, you have the opportunity to create an email capture form. So if you wanted to collect email addresses uh, directly on one of those like streaming landers, you can do that too. Um, but yeah, I would always recommend, you know, gathering as much data about your fans as you can um, so that you're able to remarket to them with content that you've created uh, in the future. Yeah, that's, I mean, having an email list is like you're, you're building your tribe that way too. Um, having followers on different platforms, your Spotify, YouTube and everything is awesome. That's also your tribe, your people, but your email list is yours. Like you own that. Um, so it's really great to build that out. And um, and you definitely have the tools available for you to do that in Tone Den. So Corinne, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And thank you to everybody for tuning in and asking questions, such great questions. I think it's awesome that we're all learning from each other this way. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us, Corinne. Cool, thank you so much for having me. Awesome, enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and bye for now.